Welcome everyone to a Circle Debate podcast, MMA episode, episode five, the recap. As we are back with action, we'll go ahead and give our recap for UFC 260. Man, but before I start, let me go ahead and introduce obviously three one. The host of the devious one, obviously, here with my brothers from another mother's, the West Side faction here, and that is, of course, the director, director, he is the one and only. Oh, well, there's this there's this new YouTuber I love who I'm not going to promote him because he's highly offensive because of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it. Uh, <laughs> and of course, I have the minus of pain. The minus of pain, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. My mother brothers right here from Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, with the championship online podcast, I have Richard and Alex. Modest. But oh, hold on, I gotta introduce him for the last time. Yeah. For the last, last time. time. Last time. Because he is no longer gonna be the reigning, defending. No, no more to gross apology. Former pathology former world champion. <laughs> and unfortunately, today, uh, Coach is not joining us this evening, flight delay, so. But he's still still, he's still, other, he's still is, yeah, there's no no shows in this sport. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> Now, before we actually get into the um, UFC 260, you guys heard about the breaking news. Someone's coming out of retirement. It's coming back for one. Oh, last I know. Night. Misha right. Tate. Yep. Tate, cupcake. Yeah, so I'll go to you, champ. What are your thoughts about Misha Tate coming out of retirement? Do you think it's a good idea, bad idea? Uh, I mean, we don't know the exact reasons why she, she is coming back. We don't mm-hmm. know if it's maybe she wants to, you know – redeem that loss against Nunez if she wants that title back. Or maybe, who knows, maybe it's financial reasons. You know, I mean, because I don't think she's working for 1FC again. I don't think she's with them anymore. Mm-hmm. So, you know, needs a paycheck. So I think she was probably thinking, you know what? Fuck it, I'll, I'll go back. So it should be exciting, um, especially the fight they're giving her. I mean, it's kind of like a tune-up, you know, because especially the uh, the person that she's fighting has, like, what, like three losses in a row, four losses in a row now? Yeah, I'll throw so, yeah. So, you know, it's just should be exciting, you know, see we'll see uh, what she can do and uh, see if that long layoff, you know, because there's there's times that fighters do really well with long layoffs because they have that break and they come back better than ever. And that's going to be the question with Tate, see if she if she's if she can still still perform uh, at the top. Yeah, definitely. Do you agree with that, Richard? Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I like I said, I would have a soft spot for Certain fighters, especially she comes from Strike Force. I mean, she does a lot. She's always been kind of the shadow of Rousey, but at the end of the day, very different story compared to Rousey. And for her to come back, I, I wish her the best. I mean, she did lose to Amanda Nunes, but who has it at this point? <laughs> so, I mean, I think every woman at the division has rose their hand and said, Yep, I lost her too. How did you lose? Well, knockout. <laughs> like everyone. So, right. Uh, it'd be cool to see, you know, maybe possibly get a rematch down the line because really there's running out of people for her, you know, for yeah. Nunes to face. Yeah. So we'll see how – it really depends how she comes out in this fight. If she yeah. struggles, like Alex says, versus, you know, a girl that she should steamroll over, then maybe hang it up. But if she comes out in a stellar performance, then the talks again versus her versus uh, Nunes, you know, it's a possibility. Ah, very true. Director. Yeah. Yeah, this I didn't know like if this was it, it feels like this is out of nowhere. Like I don't know if there was like rumors rumbling that I didn't hear about and then it just got announced. I feel like it just came out, like I woke up, looked at my phone, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's how it happened. Um the last time I heard anything about Misha Tate in the news was this unfortunate incident with uh, you know an ex of you know, I don't mm-hmm. want to get into details, it's personal shit that made the public. Um and with her strike force or not strike force, her one of C deal, I think she was like VP of talent relations. So I don't yeah. even know if she was really living in Singapore. That seems like a job that you could not not do from home, but do from she lives in Vegas in Henderson. Um, that she could do on the United States side. Um, so I don't know if she had to move to Singapore and then had to move back to, to Vegas or where she's at now. Um, she is only on a two fight losing streak, and she's 34 years old. And the last time she lost two in a row, I I've never really rooted for her. I'm a a Rousey fan, but after that second Rousey fight, she turned such a corner. I mean, look at this list of of terrorizing she went on after that second Rousey loss. Liz Carmouche, Rin Nakai, Sarah McMahon, Jessica I, and then she won the title in like the last 25 seconds of the fifth round against Rousey. 
one of the greatest come from behind victories and in a title match. So I don't think the Nunez loss and the Pennington loss were losses really that would have made me say it's time for her to retire. Obviously, that was her decision. Mm-hmm. Now let's get to Marianne Renault, someone who was passed over on the Ultimate Fighter because she was too old at the time. She's 43, four-fight losing streak. But she does have some impressive wins. She tapped Sarah McMahon and Jessica Andrade with the triangle choke. So she does know how to fight. Um, but this is a, I don't want to say it's a tune-up fight. I don't want to say it's a gatekeeper fight. This is just a good fight that's going to measure where each one of them are in their career. Is Marion on her way out? And is Misha on her way back in? This is the fight to settle that. Mm, definitely, definitely. I'm looking forward as well. And yeah, you're absolutely right. It, then this could be a redeemed fight for her. Most definitely mm-hmm. should be back on top. And hopefully, you know, get another, get another taste of that title. You know, try to go for it. Why not? Yeah, and I need to know where she's training at because I know she's usually extreme couture, but I know yeah. for a fact that for the Holly home fight, she trained at Syndicate with John Wood to get her wrestling down, which was something that came after the fact. Um, my friend Serena was actually her southpaw um, offensive wrestler because she's a southpaw, and I think home wrestler fights at southpaw. Um, and so she was the one who was trying to take Nisha down the whole, you know, for the sparring rounds. Um, so I don't know if she's still there or if she's an extreme couture, which are both based in Vegas or maybe best of both. That would be cool. Um, I'm, I'm actually excited for this no matter who wins. Um, it'd be cool to see M- Misha come back and, and go on another tear. Uh, is she going to come back and make top five in the division? Probably. Is she going to beat Nunes? Not in a fucking million years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, definitely. Not now let's get into UFC 260. Wow. Wow, what's I have to say, man? Yeah. It was fantastic. Just, wow. uh, fantastic, man. I just feel like this past weekend, there's been, like, especially combat sports, like, so many things have happened. I mean, obviously, like, the Jake Paul Askren conference happened. I didn't. That, 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 that's non-canon. That's the crown That's the crown jewel of MMA right now, homies. So yeah. Let's leave that out of And then De La Hoya's <laughs> back. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. what, what is Thriller? What happened to the other channel that he was on? Wasn't he on? He was on the zone, right? He was on the zone, and now he's in Triller. Like, yeah. making new pr- publications. I guess. I mean, it's just it's not a promotional deal with them. Like, it's not like Golden Boy did it deal with them. It's himself. So he's gonna be fighting on Triller. Well, so, is, that, is that a streaming app like it was with the zone? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so he can't really find a home for his content for some reason, which is I mean, good because he <laughs> really. Bad shit, in my opinion. Yeah, that doesn't kind of left for that reason. I think that's how I feel, you know, because there's no, right. it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't, you know, he didn't have, how you said he didn't have a home. And so he pretty much didn't. Yeah, like, I feel like, like, the zone has well, like, cause, because the zone is still doing business with his promotion. So all the fights he has is still part of the zone. I just feel like the zone didn't want to promote his fight, like right. him. Like so him he went with Triller. Like, yeah. Promote, like, Chuck and Tito, which is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but he's forty-eight years old, so it should be interesting. Definitely. I mean, he should have half, you know, ninety percent of the planet. But you know, when you put people up who are equally as skilled as him, then it's a completely different seesaw. All right, but yeah, let me go ahead and ask. What were you guys thoughts about the prelims overall? These, I'll, I'll go with you, um, CK One. What were your thoughts about the prelims? Were you impressed, or were it kind of like, eh? I was entertained. Um, yeah. There were not a lot of finishes. There was only two finishes, but they were great finishes. But the fights that didn't have finishes were still great fights. Yeah. Um, there were only, I mean, I said it in the previous episode, it's kind of refreshing that there was only going to be five fights in the undercard because I'm definitely used to watching 22 fights a night. Yeah. Um, and having the option to not do that is kind of refreshing. So, yeah. Um, Great fights, a lot of middle ranking, a lot of outside of the top 10 questions may have been solved um, today. Today's Monday, rankings come out today. I'd love to see who moved up, who moved down, and who's next for who. Definitely. Um, but there weren't a whole lot of new contenders for championships settled, but there were some movers and shakers in the, you know, just around the top 10 area. All right, yeah, Richard. Oh, very entertaining, you know, like there wasn't that many fights, so... I was just comfortable to watch the 10, 12 fights there was. But for the preliminary card, the one that stood out for me was Menfield versus uh, Turret for the Von Flu choke. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, that was just a beautiful. That was beautiful. That was just an awesome yeah. uh, submission. And then you had the other fight was uh, Nurmagomedov versus Gudin. That was a great, you know, the Dagestani wrestling was going to come along and a dominated fight. But those two fights, in my eyes, really stood out. Yeah, in that fight, like, Gooden came out strong and looked good. He never, he didn't look bad in that fight. It's just how good Nurmagomedov looked. But it was um, Nurmagomedov's hands that really came yeah. back and got him the dominant. Mm-hmm. He landed a couple of jabs, I think it was, that just rocked him and just kind of kept Gooden backpedaling the rest of the fight and made him really respect, oh, shit, I thought I was going to be defending takedowns, not jabs. Yeah. Um which that was a surprise right there. I was like, I didn't expect his hands to be bad, but I mean, he was out striking him once he found yeah. a range. I think Gooden, correct me if I'm wrong, was a, what is he a brown belt in jiu-jitsu? I know there were. Uh, I do not have the commentary. Does not have a Wikipedia. He does have a sure dog. I can find that out eventually. I believe they're like promoting that, and I was like, oh, maybe he has a chance. If you know, Rogan's mentioning that it must be, you know, he must be a good uh, jiu-jitsu fighter, mm. but he never had the chance to do that versus Nigmatov. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I do not have that information. Because I think they were saying he's like a brown belt. Yeah. If that's what they're saying, I mean, I believe them. I just verify. I don't. I don't have that information right so, now. Either way, it wasn't going to work versus Nagamoto. <laughs> <laughs> it could have. It just, it just you know, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Alex. Uh, the first one, the first fight, um, Baralt. I think that's his name. I think I'm pronouncing it. Uh, against uh, Azaltar. Oh my god! Man, he he gets rocked right, and everyone thought he was gonna lose, and then he ends up freaking knocking him out. But it's just because the guy got tired. He got tired, and then you could tell like they were just, you know, it looked like Dada versus Kimbo. They were just <laughs> yeah, they, oh my and, and god! They were just throwing, and then yeah, man, bro, just came in with a few punches. It's just like it's so funny because w- when you're in that situation, it's just like oh, you just need like just throw like four good ones, like fast punches, and you'll knock him out. Like just do it. <laughs> You know, but they're so tired and exhausted. It was fun to watch, but yeah, I think that one was probably the best one. I mean, he was losing, he got rocked, and he comes back and he finishes him. You know, and but he was fighting for his job because I think he had like two losses in a row. So yeah, he got he's... the win. He got the win, so good for him. And uh, and also, um, uh, Bukakis. Uh, I think that, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's Bukakis versus um, that one. Yeah. Olick. Got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yes. that, okay, so the it was a light heavyweight fight. Yeah, um, that was good. I mean, I thought, in my opinion, I thought Bukakis won. I think he did have to right. win that fight. Um, it was a split decision loss. Um, it was a really good fight. I mean, I think the other guy was just putting more pressure, at it, and I think that's what the judges saw. Is like he was being, he was putting the pressure and he was throwing, but I thought Bukakis landed the cleaner shots, and uh, yeah, I thought he won, but. You know, he lost, and uh, I think for me that was that was an exciting one. That was an exciting fight. It was back and forth. So yeah, those two really caught my eye. Those were pretty good ones. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And that fight too, I think Modesto's like statistically, you know, when they're putting statistics in in the fight, I think he had like more cleaner punches landed. I think it was all his side on statistics, if I'm not mistaken. And that's what's kind of a shame of the judging because the judges don't see that. It's pretty much you're sitting at a desk with a sheet of paper and their pants or they're not hearing the commentary. They're not seeing, uh, you know, Rogan's comments or anything like that or uh, what's it called? I know Sunday they do their scoring. That's not official. They're not seeing anything like that, any statistics. So it's kind of hard to, you know, just say, okay, he's taking the, you know, center of the, the octagon, he's taking control, but he's missing a lot of punches as well. Modestus really was a great counter puncher, and visually it looks like the head movements. His boxing was clean, but the fight, the, they're not going to see that. They're going to see the guys more aggressive. Even Joe Rogan pointed it out, like, oh, they're not seeing that. And the trained guy, they would see that. Well, I'm like, well, they should be because they're judging. They should yeah. see every aspect of the fight. There's no excuses for that. I mean, it's a possibility lost by split. I'm not complaining, but I think he, in my opinion, like Alex, I think Modestus did enough. I don't know how you feel about that, Chris. Um. I'm gonna be honest. I, I I watched the fight. I promise. But those details you have for some reason that fight just didn't stick with me. Um, so to agree or disagree with you right now would probably not be good. Um, yeah. Just just because there were a couple of fights that were kind of I'm never gonna really ever like bring up as a go back and watch this fight kind of fight. Yeah. So I do apologize. I I just don't remember details of that fight. 
Um, but I agree with you because you sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I, I, I absolutely did watch the fight. But one comment I was going to have was a couple of those mid card middle fights did sort of, I mean, they, they they were just not memorable, and that's okay. Not every fight can be. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and agree with Alex with with that Barry cult, Barry cult, Barry alt, Barry alt. Barry, yeah, Barry alt. There we go. Man. As good of a fight that was, that was a sloppy jalopy fight, bro. <laughs> God damn, that reminded me of what I call the golden age, which was like right after Ch- uh, right a- any anything after Ultimate Fighter One. Um, I call that the golden age. Um, it reminded me of a fight you would see back then at like UFC 50, 55, somewhere in there. Um, technique kind of out the window a little bit. Um, Barry Alt was getting tagged up a little bit. Uh, and then he sort of came back, and I think it was in the second round where he just had him mounted for four minutes and 59.9 seconds of the match. Mm-hmm. And that could have obviously been stopped. That was definitely a 10 8 and a logical re, uh, scorecard. Um, and obviously, as Itar was just too gassed to do anything about it except yeah. go from good position, from bad position to worse. I know Joe Rogan explicitly said, out of the fryer into the fire, or whatever the quote mm. is and of the fire because you know you go from mount and first thing you want to do is not get hit so you give up your back and then you open yourself up for a submission or i think um barry alt went into side control from the back and started punching from there and then he stood up and started punching from there and then in the second round he just finished it off sloppy fight but i think the most entertaining fight of the <laughs> under- yeah. it was honestly i thought astar astar had it bro i'm like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah he had it i'm like no oh. But uh, was that was uh, the standout fight for me. I, I did like that Menafield fight. That was crazy that I think Alonzo has lost. Yeah, he lost the Ovin St. Prue. It wasn't by the Von Prue choke. Um, but then he comes back and then wins with that finisher. So that's it, it's a finishing move. It's a fin- um, Pretty cool. It looked bad. Like his traps, if you look at the guy's shoulders, yeah. like, Christ. Um, it can be, even if it's not a wind choke, in that cramped space between, you can see, you know, the cage in the mat with your shoulder, that can just be 205, 220 pounds just crushing your face yeah. under the floorboards. Yeah. Um, reminding me a lot of, like, uh, here's a throwback, Steve Jenham when he fought Tank Abbott at, like, UFC 5. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you guys know. Yeah. Tank, Tank Abbott had his head in Steve yeah. Jenham's face, top of his head in his face, up against the fence and pushing his head so hard up against the fence that it bent the fence and Steve yeah. had it from that. That's what it kind of reminded me of, man. One of those just pain moves, just like it's probably fine as far as breathing goes, but that's a big guy with a lot of pressure. So smart to tap for sure. Um, but yeah, those are basically the two standouts. I think we all sort of agree on for the undercard. All right. Definitely. Now let's move on. Let's do it. Main. Let's do it. Let's see. Are we going to, are we going to have, is it still or a <laughs> new? Well, that's what so let me see. If I lose, I, if I lose, I've already set records, baby. I already set records. I mean, <laughs> you guys are gonna have to. I had three <laughs> successful <laughs> title defenses. Three in a row, man. You were the steep of this shit, bro. You always <laughs> lose it four. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have three title defenses. Come on, you guys gotta have to beat Ooh. that. So if there is a new champion, you're gonna have to beat that record. And if right. I do win yeah. again, that's, I'm a two time. Goat status. All right, so we need, let's uh let's get the champ first. How about that? I want to okay. see. That. I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. Make this sure one was really hard. Right. This one was difficult. Alex, you're over here. Let's do your tapology. Bam, right there. All right, brother. Uh, so they moved some fight. They moved a fight to the main card. I mean, actually, up to the pay per view, which I really was stoked on because I don't think people should be paying for a four card, sixty, seventy dollar event. Um, even Panay's fight got canceled too. Oh, I, I forgot think. about that. Oh, oh my yeah. Shit. Why did that get canceled? Yeah. Uh, COVID. Who? Someone in, her, in someone's camp or them directly? Yeah, her, uh, her opponent. I think her opponent had COVID. Oh shit! I didn't, I completely forgot about that. Thank you. Yeah. Jesus. That sucks. Yeah, her camp snuck in some potatoes. And, uh, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Never going to hear the end of that. Jesus. No. <laughs> um, so, right. Alex, since you were going first, you had Worthy by KO round two. Not a crazy pick, but we know the results of that was a KO for Malarkey in, like, 45 seconds. Yeah. I mean, that was a surprise. Mm, yeah, I did not. I think we all I think we all picked Worthy to win that fight. 
Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we were talking about Malarkey. You know, he was looked, he was fighting for his job. He had two losses in a row, so he needed a really big win. And it's funny because they were talking about the big age difference. You know, I think Worthy was much older than him, and I, they said that that was going to be a factor. And there <laughs> I mean, was. I mean, he freaking knocked him out. <laughs> knocked him out in forty what forty seconds. So forty six seconds. Forty six seconds. Honest, yeah, forty six. Just flat. You know, stiffened up. So, yeah, I mean, good win for him, and he looked really good, um, especially when you knock out somebody 40 seconds. I mean, <laughs> this doesn't get better than that. So, he looked good. He looked good. All right. The next one, we got Jillian Robinson and Miranda Maverick. She won by decision, unanimous, right? Nailed that. Perfect score on that one. Perfect score on that. Yeah, I mean, she looked good. I mean, uh, uh, she looked really good. I think she's legit. I think she's the real deal. I see her fighting for a title. Uh, very, very soon. It's just the question is, can she beat Chepchenko? Um, Which one? That's, uh, that's always uh, a, that's a good measure. Yeah. Because right uh, Chepchenko's the flyweight, right? She's the flyweight champion. So it would be, yeah. So Maverick's flyweight, right? Yeah. Is she? she yeah, she's flyweight. Yeah, oh, flyweight, flyweight. So yeah. So yeah, I mean. Yeah, both I both mean, sisters are in that division, I, I do believe. Leave unless 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 uh, Antonita dropped, which I don't think she did. No, she's at twelve in the rankings. Yeah, so they're both in the same division. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean she could fight her too. I mean, so that'd be a good one too. I mean, it's just I just don't want I don't want her to be rushed for a title. I mean, even though like there isn't anyone. <laughs> <there. Crazy Barbara. laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to see that. That. that makes sense. Yeah, that'd be a great fight, and especially Macy is in a position where. Like you said, I think we said the last time, she can't be cut if she loses again because this will be like the third straight loss. So, I don't know. I mean, there's so many good fights for Maverick. It's just like, I don't want it to be like like when Cejudo fought Demetrius the first time. You know, like he really didn't have yeah, enough experience was, and he got KO. It, it made some sense, but not... But wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we saw yeah. that in that fight. Mm-hmm. And right. then, so yeah, I mean, I just, I think... Just if I was if I was like the management team, just take your time, go one yeah. by one, take your time, yeah. and then when you're ready for a title, then fight Chuchenko. But yeah, I definitely see her fighting for a title in the future. Awesome. All right. awesome. And then you uh you got the sugar show TKO KO round one. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. I mean, according yeah. to according to Sean, <laughs> who had two walk-offs in that fight. I know. Uh, that fight got stopped twice, once by Sean and then once by the ref. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he looked good. I mean, it's just – I think – I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if I can speak for everyone, but I really want Almeida to win. It was a fight that I was like, oh, he needs to win, especially – are, are you are you in that decision? Are you more pro-Almeida or are you more anti-Sean? I think I would say pro-Almeida because I've been watching more longer than O'Malley. I mean, okay. I remember when he was coming up. And there was so much hype on him. And he just yeah, wasn't he was the same. Fight. Yeah. He had like no, there was uh, and then he was never the same. I feel like after Cody fight. So, you know, definitely he was fighting for his job for, uh, on this one. And this sucks because the fight that he's fighting for to be in the UFC is fucking O'Malley. So it's a tough fight for him. <laughs> so they gave him a really a tough fight. Um, yeah, it just sucks. I mean, O'Malley looked really good. He had two walk-offs. So he looked really good. His stand-up looked really good. Um, I was concerned about the leg kicks that if there was a mess up. I made a really kick that leg in the beginning, but no, it was they looked fine. I was uh, nervous about the Sean kicking back. Like yeah, the kick that Sean were throwing. They reminded me of when obviously when um, Weidman threw the kick in the second in the first the second, mm-hmm. third, and then Anderson got pissed off and tried to throw it even harder back. It reminded me of that. I was like, oh, he's going to injure himself this time, and then blame yeah. no one and say it's not a loss. Yeah, I mean, he looked good. I mean, I like, you know, he mixed it up. His stand-up is phenomenal. He looked really good. His bad thing about Meta is, you know, I think he gets released, and I think he probably, he'll probably fight somewhere in Russia or some promotional world. Bellator. Or PFL. Shooter still around? Or uh, Jungle Fight? <laughs> yeah. It's crazy because, like, a lot of these guys that get released, they fight in, like, weird promotions, like in Russia or, like, in Europe. It's, like, it's pretty weird, like – uh so, like, I don't know, maybe I've seen going there. I mean, I, I heard that the money they give out in Russia is a big paychecks. 
Um, so I can see that going for him or maybe even going to PFL, you know, yeah. especially the million dollars. Yeah. I think he'll be perfect over there, especially PFL is a need for the smaller guys. So, I mean, he'd be a good free agent. Mm. If he gets released, I don't know if he will. Maybe they'll give him another yeah. shot. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. see. I don't I, I won't be heartbroken if he stays, if that makes sense. I hope he stays. Mm-hmm. You know, I want success for him. I don't, I, I don't see him. I mean, fuck, I don't know. With this COVID thing and people inside. Especially the bubble, that last shot, too. O'Malley threw that last shot. Oh, my gosh. Oof. Horrible. Speaking of, right. speak, uh, speaking of last shots, I think these should be literally done, and that is Tyron Woodley and Oh, Luke. man. Oh, so we were talking about, about – uh, you got Luke by decision in that one. Let's go, bro. Uh, yeah, I thought, I mean, like we said, we were talking about his chin. Um, he has a good jaw. Like, he really doesn't get knocked out as much. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, knocked out. it's and been so, a while. Mark, Mark Hart, yeah. So the whole point was like, we were talking about him not being explosive at times and not pressing the gas and going forward. He did that. But it was a little bit too much. Words out of my mouth, they're coming out of yours. <laughs> I mean, it's just it was too much. I mean, I told Rich, I'm like, okay, this is the wooly we came to see. He's throwing bombs right now. He's going forward, but he got a little bit too wild, a little bit too careless, and uh, he got caught. You know, but he caught him first, and you knew he got a little too excited, tried to finish him, and then he got countered. So that's what happened. And then I did not expect that Darce to come out. I mean, geez, he got that Darce freaking – he seeked it in and he looked really good and tapped him out. And it was crazy because, you know, Willie's a black belt. So yeah. for him to, you know, to get choked out like that, you know, it's it was a good win for – and it's, it's a good win for Luke, but I feel like they know, no one talks about him. He's like the dark horse in that division. So now with this win, I want people to start talking about him and taking him more seriously because he is – He's up there. He's the best in the world, and you know, hopefully, he gets some uh, recognition. What do you uh, what do you think about that call out? Did you watch his post fight in uh, in, uh, in the monitor? Uh, who did he call out? Nate Diaz. Nate yeah, Diaz. Nate, yeah, I don't know why people are calling out Diaz brothers. I mean, they're, they're not going to fight. The fight and they look yeah. stupid for not doing it. True. Yeah. I mean, it's just I don't know. I mean, because th- that that division is stacked. So I mean, there's a lot of good fights for Luke. Um, for Wooly, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know if he gets released. I don't know if he retires. I mean, I would love to for him to go to Bellator. I feel like there's some good matches for him. I mean, you can imagine this, Wooly versus Lima. So, like, that would be a really oh, geez, good fight. That'd be awesome. That would be such a great fight, too. Because if you really think about it, he's done everything he's won in UFC. He's got his world title. You know, he's won. He's, he won the UFC title. So, why not go to Bellator and do something different and go for a new title to put in his collection? I mean, it would be exciting, especially him against Lima would be ex- fireworks. Yeah. So, you know, it, only if, if he gets released. I don't know, if they give him another match, that's awesome. But, you know, I think if he's going to do another run or if he's going to do another fight, I would love it for another promotion. Because if he fights again, it just makes it worse fighting a lower-ranked guy. And you see where he could go to Bellator, maybe even give him a title shot or maybe fight for a number one contender. You know, at least for a fight, it will mean something. Mm-hmm. Oh, great, great, all right. All right, now the main event of the evening. You got Boy. You KO round one. Close. Yeah, uh, I thought it was, I mean, it was, the first round was a little, like, feeling out. They were feeling each other, you know, and, uh, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot too much action in the first round. And then the second round, man, <laughs> that, that KO, man, it's just. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Fuck. I don't know how he comes up with so many different devastating mm-hmm. reactions to his to his yeah, strike. Yeah. I it, mean, it's like I just there's so many if you look at a highlight reel of how everybody falls mm-hmm. or reacts to his punches when he hit Arlovsky with that falling away uppercut from the yeah. left. It was the it weirdest was, shit. Took yeah. him off his feet. And I'm like, that's a 255 pound man. He just took off his feet while backing up. He hit him backing up with mm-hmm. like, yeah. like a shovel. I over. mean Stipe, I was telling Rich this too, Stipe's game plan was not going to, it was going to be the same plan he had in the first fight. You know, he was going to try to take him down and do a lot of movement, try to outbox him, but use takedowns. And he tried to go for a takedown. Francis freaking defended that very easily. 
you know, he sprawled. He looked really good defending. And you could tell he was working on takedowns. He hit a switch and, on him. He fucking hit a switch. I know. Yeah. He was, he was, yeah. You're right, yeah. Like, what the? Great, sh- yeah. And he landed those punches too while oh, he had him on the back. I thought like, that's um, how we beat um, Dos Santos, right? We, yeah. We, yeah. And I thought, yep. well, it's a repeat of Dos Santos. Mm-hmm. I mean, he looked, I mean, it's just, it's funny because I was watching, when I was watching the fight, I looked at, like, I was like, looking at Stipe's reaction. He has that reaction where, and I know I talk about this with Rich because we both kind of been through this but like when you're in a fight and you're trying these things and nothing's fucking working <laughs> and you're like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're in the headlights look where you're just like out of yeah. ideas yeah. like I've had a match where I freaking looked at Rich and I'm like nothing's fucking working like what the hell do I do you know <laughs> so that's where I feel like Stipe was like oh shit fucking takedown didn't work <laughs> fucking striking is going to be hard because this guy hits so much power yeah. so what is there else left to do and what pissed me off is that he was going, moving towards the direction of his right hand. Yeah. He was going to his left. You want to go to your right. You want to avoid that right hand because freaking that's where all the power is. And he wasn't doing that. He just he decided to exchange with him and got him with that left hook. Yeah. So, you know, it was just. He, he thought he, he rocked tried. him. I'll talk about it more with my set. But he thought he rocked him. It was Yeah, with that right hand. hand. Yeah. And the, the left, the right hand. But the reason why there was no power is because he was leaning back, throwing that right hand. Mm-hmm. He wasn't forward. He wasn't throwing power. It's almost like he countered, he backed up, and tried to throw and that right, but no there was no and, power to it. And no one has thrown – I'm not going to measure the same velocity between the two weight classes, but Chuck was the other god of throwing power on his back pedal. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a very similar finish to, like, Randy and Chuck in the re- rematch where Chuck was backing up. Or even when you look at Stipe versus Verdum, Verdum was chasing mm-hmm. Yeah, and just caught him coming in, and that's crazy to generate power with two different angles. Oh yeah, and especially like he just, especially you're not gonna knock out a guy like Francis. I mean, he just he's, he's such a big dude. Can you imagine? I know. I mean, but that's why they worries me because Francis can't make those same mistakes if he fight, and they're not even really big mistakes. They're just little, you know, things that he could work on. But you can't do that when you're fighting Jones. You can't leave himself open like that, you know, because Jones has a power to knock anyone out. So you just, he just can't. Never has. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jones can finish anybody, but he doesn't have one punch KO power at all. No, he you think so? Any. Especially with the, uh, with the elbows and the catches of the elbow, or even. Yeah, but those are those are aggregate. Those are accumulation of pretty high damaging strikes that haven't directly finished fights on the feet. He has no standing KOs. He has no flat lines. He has. Uh, you know, with the Gustafson thing, he rocked him. But he Not even with, like, the, the front time. kick, too, when he knocked out a... Uh... Who? Out... No, he didn't. No. 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 All of his finishes have been ground TKOs. Yeah, it's true. And they've been... I mean, and they haven't been too quick. I mean, Brandon Vera was an elbow from the guard. Vladimir Magyushenko was from uh, Crucifix with the elbows. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Ryan Bader thing was a guillotine, like... I can go over Jones's entire finishing rate as far as like techniques are though. But then again, it's like if Jones, if he can't take him down, then it's like he's all he's left is to stand up. And then what's going to happen? I mean, he's good at angles and measuring and keeping dis- Jones. Jones true. is really distance. good. At keeping he's really keeping distance. Yeah. yeah. One thing he does not get too cocky on the feet where he thinks he can come in and throw that one punch. He does definitely circle and throw the angles. We saw mm-hmm. that one. Um, the, so, the kicks too, the big yeah, kicks. Exactly. He's he really, really well. Up. So, yeah, yep. he's not. Gonna, he, he's really good at not jumping into the fire. Yeah, <laughs> and it's crazy because like, I just think it was crazy that they didn't even mention a trilogy. You know, it's one on one. I mean, and God I mean, know, which is kind of cool. I mean, you would think Miosic, he's done enough to at least he could get another rematch, especially dominating the heavyweight division. You would think he. Would, didn't have that uh, that rematch. And that's what it kind of pisses me off, too. It's kind of like, what's the point in doing a rematch? If I lose, I don't even get a rematch, and I'm the champion. That's why it doesn't make sense. It's like, yeah, I beat him the first time. That's it. I don't want to fight no more because I already beat him already. But then if you do the rematch, it's just like it's not a win-win because if you lose, you don't get yourself a rematch for that title. And that's pretty much what's happening with him because Francis is probably going to move on and fight Jones. And where does Stipe go from here? Does he fight Derek Lewis? Does he fight, you know, who, you know, it's just, you would think he's done enough, at least he could get a title shot. 
right. you know, a trilogy. So, I don't know. I mean, Goodwin for Francis, he looked really good. The takedown defense was something I was very shocked and freaking just knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you, good. Good. Thank you, Lego. Cool, man. So, Alex is score, the reigning defending champion, but we're not sure if it's – and still – Yeah. Uh, at 380, had oh. six of 10 winners, uh, two perfect, which is more than half. I mean, by one, um, which is, you know, not bad at all. More, uh, you have the entire main card besides the worthy fight, like almost perfect on all of them, too. All right, let's, let, let's do, uh, let's do coach since, uh, yeah, for sure, man. Since we don't really have to talk to him about anything, I can just bring all the shit up. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what right. coach, let's see where he scores. Sure. He had a worthy by decision wrong. He had Maverick by TKO in round two. He had the winner right, but the finishing wrong. He had Almeida by decision wrong. Woodley by decision wrong. Yoji by decision wrong. Wow. With a score of 250. I think he went really safe. Yeah. Um, yeah. He didn't go with the betting favorites at all for some reason. I don't know. Um, I was going to say, yeah. kind of went with his heart on that one, I guess. Alex hacked into his system, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he changed them. <laughs> Imagine. We got a first place and a second place so far. Um, let me bring up Richard. Oh, Richard. <laughs> Name, there is your tap. All right, man. Damn. Yeah, we all probably got worthy by KO in round two, and we were. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, did you see that uh, going that quickly in the favor of uh, – I guess he's English but trains in Australia because his flag was Aussie, but his accent was absolutely Cockney. Um, <laughs> yeah, that threw me off too, yeah. Yeah, for, for Malarkey, though, you uh, it was around 146 seconds. Yeah, that, I mean, that was when we were talking about, you know, the card. When I saw the record, I'm like, okay, he's 0-2, one more loss, he's out. So when you put that in front of him, he knows, like, okay, like, I'm going to be out of a job if I don't win, obviously. Worthy's coming in with work, I think, two and one. He was a favorite. I think even the betting odds were a favorite. All of us, I think, picked him. So right away we thought, oh, okay. I thought my screen froze. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think everyone thought, you know, Worthy was going to get it, but. I mean, there's not much to tell. It was it happened so quick in 46 seconds. Malarkey looked like he was coming in with combinations, throws that loop, leaping left punch, and then ends it, and that was it. And then Worthy plate face uh, face plants, eats a couple more punches, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, hats off to Malarkey. I mean, job, job saving performance for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he was gonna get his walking papers, and he said, "F that, rip those walking papers," and said, "I need my yeah. job." So, really think, great um, performance on him. The uh, the bear Jew pulled something like that at one point. Where he was yeah. like, he knew he was gonna win or lose, and if he lost, he he was out. And he's like, I'm not going out like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and not even that, he just he puts like, like the way he did it too, just shows like, no, I'm I'm here, like I'm a real threat. Like those two losses are now past me, and I'm gonna knock out this guy. And he did in 46 seconds, which is yeah crazy. All right, next fight you had Miranda Maverick by decision. That was a perfect pick, my friend. Good job. Yeah, you know, I knew his decision going, you know, her record, and she's a wrestler. I thought she was going to play it kind of safe. I mean, Jillian shows a threat in her stand-up. I mean, coming from the American top team, they have great strikers there. I mean, look who, I mean, look who's in that camp. So, obviously, with Dean Thomas, too, as a coach, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought, you know, we're going to see something. I'm a big fan of Jillian. I, I don't even think she's even ranked in the 15. She's been there for a while. She's had, what, what eight, ten fights. She's number 15 exactly. Oh, she is? Okay. Yeah. And I don't think wow. this, this ranking system isn't updated because it still yeah. has Luke at like 10 and Maya at 7 unless that's where they think they should be, but that's not correct. In my no, opinion. they, they yeah. haven't updated yet. Okay. 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 So at the, at the time of the fight, she was 15. And um, okay. uh, Macy – or not Macy, sorry. Her name is – Macy's at 14. Uh, Maverick isn't here, so I'm assuming Ma – uh, Maverick's taking that 15 spot, and Jillian's going to be in the top 20 somewhere. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, after this, uh, hopefully they update it soon. I mean, Robertson was saying I need to jump in closer to the top 10, but with this fight, it's a big setback. I mean, it's kind of looking that, you know, Robertson was coming into UFC, was a hot prospect, and now it's kind of passing on the torch to Maverick, who now, you know, the world is on, you know, 
all eyes on her pretty much with her great performance, her wrestling. She comes in, like you said, kind of Matt Hughes-esque punches, goes for the takedown, dominates. I mean, the second round was a little close. I would give it to Robertson. I could see the 29-28. I think at one point, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Robertson had, I think, a choke. She was trying for a submission. Get her back in. I think, yeah. yeah, she had a couple of times. I think she had it for a good, like, half a minute. And then Maverick just slips up beautifully and did a great job. Pretty much old school American wrestling and some punches coming in. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. So next match, you had Thomas Almeida by decision. Okay. Eh, you did. Wait, no, my bad. My bad. You're, you're oh. not okay. There you are. You got a melee by TKO round one. Sorry about yeah, that. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, gotta, I, I, I almost have to take Jose's down so I don't keep looking at his. <laughs> but you had, you had a melee by round, uh, round one TKO. It's like, I picked yeah. that yeah, I was wait a second. I mean, it's possible. I mean, <laughs> but still, I mean, I'm, I'm I don't want to fanboy out too much, but O'Malley, I witnessed something great in a, in a way that I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna fanboy out for a second. Go for my it, apologies. Man. O'Malley in this fight, he put the art in mixed martial arts. He was a true artist. He painted a pretty picture for me. His fists were the paintbrushes, and the canvas was Alameda's face. Pretty much. Oh. <laughs> Great he way to put it. it. Like, <laughs> took me a while to find the words, but I don't want to mess up, you know, talking about O'Malley. I mean, he did great. His punches were on cue. He almost did the walk off, but said, no, I got to finish it. That's why, you know, he went for that brutal punch. Even he was saying it wasn't necessary for that last strike. But now with the refs kind of like giving you a chance and not giving them a chance, I mean, we knew Alameda was in a fall. Just what round was he going to, you know, fall and became the third. But hats off to him. I mean, he has the heart of a warrior. He's not going to give up. But sometimes that comes with consequences. He's just going to come and get a beating for three rounds, and it's not necessary. And that's what he did. O'Malley was just throwing anything he felt like. If he wanted to throw a, a <laughs> yeah, triple, you know, a twister, he could spin and do a backflip and try to do a kick. He, he, he'll land it. Uh, I mean, he doesn't really care. He throws everything in the arsenal. Yeah, he'll do anything. And he could do a Pele kick and it probably would land. I mean, he did everything <laughs> he wanted to do, you know. And uh, Alameda made a great, I mean, I hate to say it, kind of a punching bag. I mean, he didn't have that much of an answer. Um, at this point, if you're just going like that, you might as well try to go for the knockout. But for O'Malley, his slick movement, it's just, he makes it virtually impossible. And he did a great job getting the knock in the third round. Very nice. Ooh, yeah, nice. that was it was a good fight. I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, next fight, you had Luke by TKO or KO round three. Yeah, that speaks for itself. I mean, Vicente, with his record, I think with his 11th, I believe he has like 13 wins in UFC, eight of them were knockout. So, I mean, he does, I mean, he does have the power. So, I thought he was going to go for a knockout instead of submission. He did obviously rock uh, Woodley a couple of times before he's submitting him. Um, Woodley just came out, I mean, guns blazing. If you would have done, I tell Alex, he needs to do something with the last fight and what he did today and somewhere in the middle because he came, last few fights, he came so damn slow and didn't throw anything. He was gun shy. And this time he was, whoa, take it easy, boy. He went too much. And, mm -hmm. uh, it, I mean, he, I mean, it's tough to say, like, now he's 0-4. I mean, his last four fights, he's a four-fight losing streak. So where does he really go from here? Um, but bye bye. <laughs> at this point, yeah, bye -bye. <laughs> it, it sucks. I mean, he's done so much. He was a great champion. I mean, I know a lot of haters, but I mean, he was, in my eyes, he was a great champion. You know, people were saying, oh, he just wrestles and does this and the, you know, and ground and pound. I mean, the champion before him was GSP, in my opinion, one of the pretty much the greatest Walter of all time, and that was his style. So, what's the difference? Um, and he had a great strike for his career. I mean, the man really deserves. If he retires, he deserves a standing ovation and everyone appreciating his work. I feel that, you know, Dana White really trashed him <laughs> multiple fights and it looks bad when the yeah. president is, you know, pretty much trashing you. I mean, he does what he has to do, you know, to retain the championship. When you're fighting in a high high level like that, especially versus Wonder Boy and all the other fighters, it's going to be close. You just can't come out like that guns blazing. Because look what happened. He faces hey, 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 Dana, he gets... Dana, Dana is a 10-time world champion, okay? He could talk whatever yes. he wants. <laughs> <laughs> okay? He's fought the best he, out there, okay? Yeah. He, <laughs> I know, right? 
you can't do that. Vicente uh, took his time, got the shots, and got the submission. And and this way now we got a new star, which is Vicente. Now he's a new threat in the welterweight division. I love to see what's next for him. Agreed. And that main event, you had Miocic by TKO round three. <laughs> I, I mean, switched it. You, uh, he did. He did a my move. Yeah, he did. It just backfired. <laughs> I, I feel you. Uh, I just. I mean, I always had another guy I, re I really liked was Stipe. Um, I thought it was possible. I'm like, what are the odds if he gives him this first knockout? I mean, he dominated the first fight, obviously with you know his wrestling and you know striking also, but. I really was going through a moment looking at both records like, okay, you know, Nagano's a threat. I mean, he's coming with a vicious knockouts, but who's he really beating? He's beating, you know, Arlovsky, who's kind of past his prime. Then he beat uh, one of my heroes, Velasquez, who's past his prime. And he's beating some guys like Blades, but, I mean, I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I'm like, Whoa. He had struggled with uh, – who did he struggle with? With Lewis. So I said, maybe it's possible he'll lose again. I just thought this time, I just pictured in my head Stipe taking him down, somehow getting some ground and pound and finishing it. That, that would be a perfect role for me because I'm a really big Stipe fan. But, I mean, it didn't happen, obviously. Nagano is just a beast, and I don't see anybody stopping him anytime soon. I don't think he even – I think he knocks out Jones, too. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think he does it. Yeah. As much as a fan of Jones as I am, and I am, I'm I, admittedly an uh, – unashamedly an in-ring fan of Jones you know just whatever happens yeah. inside that cage I don't think he it's just, gonna I don't think it's gonna work I don't think uh, Jones I don't know what he's gonna do I need you to guys see, read, I need to see what he looks like I need to see them standing next to each other I guess like yes yeah. did you guys read the the, the release do you guys know a little bit about that I just know he wanted his release of his contract he wants his release oh, now he, tweet, he just put just he put just please cut me already but Jones has said a lot of stupid shit on Twitter yeah yeah so I don't take that at all with any kind of grain of salt. So. Well, what what do you guys think about Dana White's comments? I mean, at the fight, he's like, "If I'm Jones, I'm going to middleweight." Pretty much oh, saying yeah. he's kind of scared. I, I I know exactly what Dana White is doing, and he's using reverse psychology to. Yeah, he's pissing him off for him to fight yeah. him. He's trying yeah. to make hey, he's I, trying to make that fight happen. Yeah, hey, Ivan called it. Remember, he said that he said Jones is afraid. <laughs> no, 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 Adesanya. He said about oh, Adesanya. It's, oh, my bad. Yeah. Um, but I but think that was wrong. Fine, right? Full psychology. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, not much to say. I mean, like I said, Alex said it perfectly because we're both watching a fight. I mean, Stipe went to his corner and looked kind of lost, like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? My striking isn't doing anything to him. This guy's a cyborg. He's coming forward, <laughs> he's hitting my punches. Yeah. Uh, I can't even wrestle him every time. I'm re well, I was impressed every time he's wrestling him. Uh, Nagano kind of put his hips out. He went for the underhooks, pulled them up, and was like, no, not this time. Like, I actually learned I learned something, and I learned all my mistakes, and I'm a different fighter, which he is. He, he's evolving. It. The scary thing about him is that every fight, he's evolving. And he's so calm. Even they said a, a calm Nagano is a scary Nagano. Yeah. And a Nagano that could wrestle is even a scarier, scarier Nagano. Well, people I mean, forget that you know, his second person second fight in the UFC he won in like a minute or two with that Gamora yeah so he has four submissions ground, I believe yeah those ground skills I mean they, they exist comparing them to you know world champion wrestler like mm -hmm. Stipe is a little bit different but there's a talent there and an absolute fire to learn um for sure because he knows we need to improve and oh absolutely imagine that guy grabbing you in a rear naked choke no <laughs> I don't. That's I don't want to do <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> but, I mean, it was sad to see. I mean, Stipe, like Alex was saying, he goes in that store and he's like, I don't know what to do. He just had that lost look. And his coaches are like, hey, you got to push up the pace of your striking. And there wasn't really anything he was going to do wasn't going to work at that point. It's a and, shitty uh, position to be in. Yeah. It's a shitty position to be in. <laughs> I think Alex and I, uh, we were depressed for a few seconds. We were talking because... We competed a little bit, nothing compared to them, but I've been in situations where I'm like, shit, I'm doing everything I can, and this guy is like a mind reader, and he's in my head and he's beating me. And, and that's how it was. Yeah, and the more you try, the more tired you get. The more you fail, yeah. the more you fail. Exactly, you know, so exactly. Like, on top of that. Exactly. I've been in positions, you know, many, many years ago, almost 10 years ago, and I would wrestle, and I would get taken down, and I'm doing – four different moves and it's not working and I'm just repeating the same shit hoping this switch is going to work 
This is the fifth switch I've done in this <laughs> wrestling match. It's going to work, and it's not. I'm just getting tired and embarrassed, and that was going to happen with Stipe if it would have kept on going for the next three rounds. <laughs> it was just tough to see, and, I mean, wh- where does he really go from here? I mean, Stipe, like Alex saying, I wish there was a rematch. It was kind of, in my opinion, kind of waiting for – then that was going to happen. I think Daniel was kind of hoping, okay, if this guy loses, now I have my big pay-per-view. This could be the fight of the year, the Super Bowl – fight of the year with Stevie, I mean, uh, Francis Nagano versus John Jones. That's the fight that everyone wants to see. That's got to be, and yeah. yeah this, was, this is a fight that makes legends. Probably the biggest and fight of all time. That's the fight. It, it possibly is. And Stevie now is in the corner, kind of like yesterday's news. I mean, the only fight for Stevie that makes sense for me is versus uh, Lewis. But other than that, who does he really fight next? And does he fight? I mean, do you, th- you guys think he continues? I Yeah, I, uh, I feel like he should. I, I think maybe... Um, he deserves some time. He time deserves off, some yeah. time off. And I don't. I don't yeah. honestly. If he does not fight till twenty twenty two, I won't be surprised or mad at it. That was a mm-hmm. devastating KO. That mm-hmm. I mean, obviously he was taken to a hospital immediately for CAT scan yeah. or CTE. Yeah. Um, That's- and. To jump back into, e- I mean, obviously the commission puts out suspensions for no contacts. Yeah, uh, it would be safe for him to not have contact sparring probably ever again. Like Robbie Lawler, yeah. you know, Robbie Lawler turned that corner. We realized, like, why would I be getting my ass, my head caved in in practice when I can retain, mm-hmm. you know, my consciousness and then just perform? Yeah. Uh, Even the way he landed too was scary. No, I'm surprised I he broke his leg. He didn't blow out. Yeah, yeah right. It looked, it looked, it looked like, mm-hmm. like that crow cop one. Like, remember how? Yeah, because with Gonzaga and, uh, and, yeah. and, and Rashida and Evans. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! I absolutely think that he probably has an injury. Hopefully, it's not a torn ACL or MCL or anything like that. But yeah, it's just I, hard to watch. He's such a good guy too. I mean, he's likable outside the yeah. octagon. Oh yeah, he's very he's humble. Father of, the year. father of the year for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, great father. He's a fireman. I mean, he gives back active, to the city. That's a firefighter. I don't understand. Like Chris yeah. Lytle. Chris Lytle also from my well, I don't think he's from Chris Lytle was a Hoosier, so I don't know if that's Cleveland or not. But you know, active. Oh, he's in Indiana. Time. He's from Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. Indiana, there you go. Um, that's insane because firefighters work like they're like seven days on, one day off, and shit like that. And this guy spars and trains and also exactly. does promo. Insane. And another thing, I want to get you guys' opinion. Alex and I were talking. This is a heavyweight champion in the world. This guy's possibly not, you know, if Nagano, we'll see what Nagano's career, you know, happens in the future, but possibly the greatest heavyweight of all time. And he's only worth like, I think, four million. I mean, for a heavyweight champion, and he even said, like, yeah, I have to continue my fireman career because I have to see what's after, you know, fighting. Pretty much saying I have to, you know, still feed my family and continue doing my career, Mm -hmm. which is kind of hard to see what you see in other sports, which is basketball. I mean, these guys in basketball could play four or five seasons, and some of them are bench, and they're still making, you know, $15, $20 million contract. Right. And this poor guy is only worth $4 million and still has to work and, you know, be a fireman. Imagine – you have a fire in your house, and this guy comes in like, "Oh my god, the UFC heavyweight champion of the world is saving my house." Like it's kind of you wouldn't say that about LeBron, you know, and say <laughs> yeah. about this guy, which is kind of well, hard. I mean, it's kind of hard to talk about. Jack Jack's technically a deputy police officer, but it's after his retirement. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right, technically, yeah. And it's unfortunate that he's not worth more than that. And I, and yeah, he he's going to be going down as one of the greatest world heavyweight champions because he defeated a lot of legends. Yeah. In, in that ranking systems, I mean, especially, I mean, shit, great that title defenses he had were great legends, and the why most not? division ever, which is absurd. Yeah, because yeah. that's who you're uh, right. absolutely right. That just proves how hard it is to stay at the top of that heavyweight game. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Not that I'm giving uh, any disrespect to any of the lower weight class divisions, but there are a lot of three to eight title defenses in multiple mm-hmm. divisions. Yeah, but I don't. I mean, just, but that heavyweights. I mean, that, that heavyweights just hit and they bang, man. It's just a different, different animals up there, like completely different species. I mean, and those fights sad. take years out of their lives, man. I mean, they're not the same. These guys have to lose a championship. Mm-hmm. But yeah. what I was saying before we continue, what I was saying about fin- financial, you know, the financial part about these fighters is now. My point is John Jones. John Jones was saying, tweeting, saying, show me the money. And I think that's one reason why he's not accepting the fight, because the money ain't right. 
and that's a sad thing too that you know he said get me paid and i'll get in that ring with that with that monster and that's not happening i mean something needs to change and dana needs to fork over his uh his wallet how much he sold that company and pay these guys you know pretty much that's what's going on because if he's going to take a risk of losing he's gonna he's gonna want a big paycheck he wants a big payday and it looks I like he's not getting it initial offer was <laughs> i know i mean he made some crazy offers i mean he made that ridiculous offer to that that bum from russia what was his name fedor the greatest fighter of all time <laughs> he is and not at the, the time, greatest he's not the greatest and at the time even dana said years later he said i didn't want to say how much i offered him but if i would have said how much i offered that man fighters would would have Quit or retired on me and be so upset because I gave him some of his biggest paycheck. He's a great, he's a living legend. The company too, so they were. So yeah. Dumb. Oh yeah. So if you so, offer to that bum, just give it, give double that and give it to Jones. Right. <laughs> Real. And Richard, those guys will never be as cool as Fredo. Okay. <laughs> when you fight a six eight guy, you need to come talk to him. Oh my god. <laughs> Chris, 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 pl- Chris, please roast him again. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Homeman Choi was what a professional wrestler with no, no MMA training. He was, with a he was a pop star. <laughs> he was a kickboxer. <laughs> he was okay. a K1 kickboxer who has wins. And that guy, over, name, name over another Nesta fighter. Name another fighter. Name another Bama. fighter. Name another fighter that he fought in MMA. Mark Hunt, Michael Krokop. Did he win those Mark fights? Mark Coleman, Kevin Randleman. He, he beat, beat those, those guys. Oh, wait, oh, wait you talking about Homeman? Homeman Choi beat those guys. Hogman beat freaking Ernesto Hoost and Banner, some of the greatest kickboxers of in all MMA? time. In MMA? Kickboxing. Kickboxing. Still okay, counts. So he beat those... Jose Canseco, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Really? That made, that made yeah, he grow. did. You ever right. saw that fight? He did. I remember that. Jose was wearing, like, a T-shirt that looked like tattoos, but it was a T-shirt. It was so bad. <laughs> oh God, he, he literally that. looked like me, but if this was a T-shirt. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Hard-earned ink. <laughs> Google it. It's so brutal. Richard, your score... Brother, I would love to share this with you. 3.30. You are currently in second place. If I would have picked the Nagano. I know. I know. You might have had it. Uh, I get to go next because I just want to. So, (laughs) Ivan, Ivan, you can ask me questions. There's my scoreboard right there. All right. So. So well on that undercard and so bad in the main card. (laughs) I got almost everything wrong. Everything wrong on free tv and everything right on on the uh, because like the prelims like the favorites they all lost pretty much yeah. i know I, I really i really dig into these too i look up records and odds and shit like yeah. that and, and that's the thing about mma man is i think all fights are honestly 50 yeah. 50 really, yeah there's really no high percentages yeah definitely malarkey and worthy what did you do? Uh, yeah same thing everyone else said it's gonna be worthy with first round <laughs> ko and, uh, just flipped the script on us and wanted to keep that job and wanted to have us talk about him for a couple of weeks. Um, that's a highlight real KO that's probably all over ESPN. It's even, you know, for the next week or two. Web Gems, yeah. I don't know if they still do that, but yeah, that was a statement. Um, I don't think Worthy is going to get cut, but I definitely thought Wor- Malarkey would have been in a loss. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Jillian Robinson, Miranda Maverick. I had Maverick <laughs> too. I thought she was going to smash a little bit because of uh, just Jillian's uh, comparison in her ground game to Maverick. Here's what I want to say, though, is Maverick actually, in my opinion, looked not great. And hmm. I only blame how good Jillian actually looked and how well prepared for that ground hmm. onslaught she was. It took Maverick uh, coming into the hmm. third round. Uh, I think she was key-eyeing and throwing punches and – was yeah. like, okay, my ground game, she's she's definitely trained for the ground game. I'm going to have to resort to the thing that she was not expecting, which was the hands on the feet. And, I, you know, that's kind of where that fight ended up. She still got the decision, but Robertson definitely didn't get pwned like I thought she was. And all credit to her for that fight. Um, but, yeah, Maverick's definitely top 10, top 15. Uh, I don't know who's next for her. I don't think they're going to risk losing a superstar in either her or Barbara by having them fight this early. I think they're going to wait till one of them either has the belt or both of them are in the top five for that to happen and be a title eliminator. Um, with the rankings right now, who would be next for – I mean, Antonina Valenciano, uh, that'd be great. She's ranked uh, somewhere in, in the card. Uh, she's 12. Yeah, so if Maverick gets 15, Antonita's 12, have that be the fight to make. I don't see – unless Antonita's already booked, I 
If she's not, make that fight. Mm -hmm. I, I love that fight. I, I just because I just want to see how that goes. All right, shot O'Malley and Thomas Almeida. Yeah, I had O'Malley by TKO round one, and I was almost right. If O'Malley, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that was youthful exuberance to call that fight before the ref did. That was, like he said in his post fight, he wants to build his career off of viral moments, and it would have mm -hmm. been. Uh, but it's a little embarrassing that it didn't go that way and could have been a train wreck of a mistake because Almeida recovered masterfully and started throwing in defense off of the cage. And I was like, oh, shit, we're about to get a Muhammad Lawal, Robbie Lawler moment right now. <laughs> um, it would have been the most embarrassing loss of the year if O'Malley got tagged on that exit. Yeah. Um, Almeida definitely recovered, but he was taking shots. And, yeah, like Richard said, he was throwing everything with style points at him. I couldn't believe how fast O'Malley was. Everything was so out of no. He wasn't telegraphing a damn thing. The combos were there. It was a great performance against someone who is maybe going to get cut. Um, I also mentioned in the preview episode that I don't think O'Malley is going to change anything stylistically. And the only thing he changed was he was more sugar in this fight than he yeah. ever been. Mm, agree. Sure. It was definitely the same fighter ramped up to 11. Um, is this a test of him being a world defeater? Probably not. I'd like to see what happens next. That's the fight that's going to really be the coming out party for Sean, I think, um, as far as the return to form for him. But, uh, yeah, next for him, Jesus Christ, I don't even know. Right. Uh, he's at 35. Is that correct? Yeah, because I want to ask you about that. He's not even ranked. Uh Marlon Vera is still at Marlon 15. Marlon Vera is at 15. And they're definitely not going to put him above Marlon, who just beat him. So, I mean, yeah. he can fight someone. He, the rematch with Vera is probably smart money, um, unless he fights someone in the top 10. Um, or not, not inside the top 10, I'm sorry, within the top 15, which we have Kyler Phillips, Cody Stamen, Murad Dirashvili, Jimmy Rivera. The Marlon Vera fight's going to happen. I can almost, I, I would put a dollar down that that's probably going to happen next. I agree. Yeah. You, yeah. uh, Woodley and Luke. Yeah, man, I had Luke by decision. I thought that was going to be a safe bet. Um, Woodley came out in a way that I was very impressed by. I'm not mad at him for trying, coming in guns blazing, and it was working until it wasn't. Um, it was very similar to the Gilbert Burns Usman first couple of seconds, where Burns came in guns a blazing and walked into something that tagged him and changed the direction of the fight until it was finished. Um, they're both. Both great on the ground. Obviously, Woodley has a black belt, and I think Luke also has a black belt. Um, would Luke have been able to have gotten a submission if Woodley was already not rocked like he was? Maybe, but it wouldn't have been as, I don't want to say easy. It was set up with Woodley falling down with his face down into a front headlock and then going for the Dars. Uh, so he was definitely, you know, you're a black belt until you get punched in the face, and then you're a purple belt until you get punched in the face. That was never more apparent than in this fight for sure. Um, yeah. Who's next for Luke? I don't think Luke – Luke wants Diaz because he wants the money, and I get that. But every yeah. time I see Luke fighting somebody, I'm like, oh, shit. I hope who he's fighting isn't someone I root for because they're probably going to lose that fight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, afraid, I'm afraid of all my favorites to fight Luke because he beats them all. Um, if you – god damn, well, man. But it looks okay. Okay, so for this win, should move him up in the rankings to a number at least number seven. Because that's where Woody, yeah, Woody's Woody at. Is seven. Yeah, yeah, Woody's yeah. seven. He'll be but looking right now at, before that fight because they haven't at had ten. Who's at ten? 10. 10. Mm -hmm. Woody's at seven, uh, and Luke already lost to Thompson, who is on the verge of a title shot pending mm -hmm. the Masvidal Usman fight. Hopefully, or the oh, gosh. It, it is what I it hate is. That fight. I hate hey, that man, fight. If you lose the Super Bowl, I guess you get to go right back to the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh. I hate that fight so much. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know. No one asked for it. No one asked for that. <laughs> no, I know nobody did. I ain't mad at it, but yeah, as, far as, as far as earned goes, nah. Um, yeah, I don't know about the earned for it. Luke, Realistically, I don't want to see him fight Maya. I don't want to see him fight Thompson again right away. Maybe Kiesa. That would be great. That would actually be a great fight. Um, because those are two guys who are great on the feet who can finish it on the ground. Um. 
yeah, Luca and Kiesa, it's probably going to be a fight night main event because Luke has never had a main event and he wanted that. I mean, he wants a main event. He said in the post fight, um, I think that's the fight to make. Um, I don't think Kiesa is booked up anytime soon. I don't think he's injured. Um, get him in the bubble and make it happen. Make it happen sometime around July. Yeah, about three, four months from now. I'm into that. Yeah. The main event. I got Ngannou by round one, and it was looking that way. Uh, I said in the yeah, preview, yeah. Show, I, I said in the preview show that in a rematch, it only takes a person who loses to make a minor adjustment. And goddamn, did Ngannou make <laughs> that adjustment? Uh, we saw a very similar thing with Czech Congo. I think he fought. Oh my God, Cain Velasquez, I do believe, and got smoked on the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. Stopped kickboxing for a straight year and only went to wrestling. And became one of the best wrestlers in the heavyweight division to never <laughs> wrestle in college. Um, I think that's what's happening with Ngannou. Um, he turned that wrestling corner. And if Stipe can't take you down, uh, very few other people in the heavyweight division probably can. Um, masterful, patient performance. And he knew when to fire the big guns. Uh, and boy, that counter back left hook was devastating. Holy shit. Um launched him onto his kneecaps and probably tore every bone in his body when he did it, man. Just great performance. He was patient when he needed to be, but he pulled the trigger exactly when he needed to. Uh, and then the follow-up shot, that nuclear Cameroon carpet bomb destination Cleveland didn't need to I don't know why the, I don't know why the ref... The ref was right there. ref was like, do it. Just, yeah, I want to see it. Herb G was like, do it. Yeah. <laughs> It was, like, it was as unnecessary as it needed to be. Herb was yeah. like, like Herb Bean was like six feet away. Yeah. And, uh, no, he's running. Yeah, he it, ran it just, right away, quick, like right after. Like, okay, yeah, he's Herb, Herb's feet. Yeah. You know, his toes were touching Stipe's ears. That's how close he was. He could have stopped that. Fucking hell, man! But yeah, and Gondo and Jones is the fight to make. And, it, and Jones obviously plays a really silly social media game. Yeah. Uh, he says he wants to fight before it happens, and then after the fight, he doesn't speak up until there's a contract thrown his way, and then it's not good enough, and then now he wants to be cut already. This shit is so childish. And <laughs> it works, though. That's the fucked up part about it, is we saw that <laughs> when, he fought, when he fought Gustafson the second time. There was some, you know, it was all handled on Twitter. They moved the fight to L.A. instead of Vegas the day of. Um, yeah, just... just Give the man the money, make the fight happen, let Ngannou shut him up. And this is coming from a Dahar Jones fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I don't see any real reality where Jones walks out of this unbroken. Um, he's going to have to play the smartest game plan. And like I mentioned, uh, I need to see them standing side by side at the weight. Yeah. See if, mm -hmm. I even think Jones could even take him down. And Jones has surprised me in the past. So, I mean, let's see it. Let's make the fight happen, bro. Let's just handle business. Fight week in July, August, you know. Put it in whatever venue has fans that is open. Put it in Texas. Put it in Dallas Arena or Cowboy Arena. Fill that thing up. 40,000 people. Just handle business, man. Just get her done. Definitely, definitely. And what we got. And my score. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again. And yeah, go go for it. Oh yeah, my score. So I did have a score. It was it was a great score. It was two uh, three hundred five. I am in last place, mm. second to last place, uh, third place. Yeah, my opening. Like yeah, you said, all the favorites I picked did not win, and then all the favorites on the main event did win. Pretty crazy. Uh, let's put my name up there too, because I am Chris. <laughs> I, man, what's up, man? Talk to me, baby. You save, have a, save me best for last, right? <laughs> you know, Alex is nervous. He's nervous. He's Alex, he is. Alex oh. is leading by 50 points, which is – I don't know how – I don't know the point breakdown on topology. I don't know if it's like 20 points for right and then another 20 points for perfect. Um, I just play the game. I never question it. Ivan's topology, brother. You got uh, Miranda Ma – or James, Wor James Worthy. What is this, basketball from the 80s? <laughs> Co 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 comma? Is it comma? Worthy yeah. by decision? Uh, wrong. Yeah. Yeah, we all yeah. were. No we all we all were wrong with that. That was an unexpected, but I got to give it to Malarkey, man. That was a great, great knockout. So I mean, I got to give it, you know, give kudos to him. But yeah, it was it was a good fight overall. But I just didn't expect that at all. I yeah. from Worthy either. That yeah. was unexpected. 
Um, um, Maverick by decision. Perfect score. Good job, bro. That one, you know what? I got to give it to Robinson, too. She got kind of gave her – kind of got her in trouble, I think, in the second round, late second round. Oh, she but, was in fantastically dominant position. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think she got robbed for that second round. One of the judges missed, scored it wrong. And that should, that round should have been for, for Robinson because she had that, that second round one for sure. Uh, yeah, but I mean, she okay. dominated that whole second round of, you know, um, Maverick. But Maverick adjusted. She, she, you know, she adjusted very well in the third round. So, yeah, kudos to these both women. And, I mean, this loss does affect Robinson, but I don't think it should because they, she, this, at least you could tell that she could still, she still can go with someone way younger than her and an upcoming start, like, you know, like Maverick. So, definitely. Yeah, this is only, this is only two in a row. Um, yeah. And her last fight was over a year ago. No, it was in December. My bad. No, yeah, it's December. December. We haven't seen her like. <laughs> um, all right. So then, O'Malley. Uh, O'Malley decision. Smart, smart bet. Right. We had there. to play it mean, safe, but man, I know Richard. You're a fanboy. I get. I. I gotta <laughs> give it to you. He's like your mini Conor McGregor 2.0 for sure. Yeah. He's heading that. He's heading that route for sure. He could he could talk to talk and he could walk the walk so he could back it up. Oh yeah. I it just I was a shocker to me that you twice you had this fight, you know, like in the first round. Very easily you walked out of it. Like, come on, bro, what are you doing? That, okay, I respect his middle is you know, I respect his fighting skills, but don't let you don't let your ego get the best of you. Because shit like this can ruin you, can tarnish you. It's a, it's ego, but I kinda also respect like he doesn't go like unnecessary punches. Even he said, "I don't want to throw that punch. It's just that I kind of have to. There's no choice in order for the ref to jump yeah. in." So it's yeah. kind of like, yeah, like he's showing off, but also he's like, "I'm not gonna throw it. He's already well, out." He, here's the thing that people don't bring up is he doesn't taunt. He doesn't wave you in. He's not like Cody Garbrandt or Anderson yeah. Silva. He doesn't it's bait true. you in with mocking you. He does that really cool look away, throw the punch thing, but he's throwing the punch. He's not actually looking away he's making you he's fainting he's fainting so it's, a, it's, an, it's an attack move when he, he like he looks away like he's not paying attention yes. and then he throws something max holloway yeah. was doing that um but he's not sitting there like come on put puts his hand he's not uh no 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 the boy, him with his hand his back. he's not you know any of this shit he's not wasting any moment to to attack I, i'm with um, you on that i'm with you 100 percent on that it just like he he doesn't talk in the ring but like when it comes to like before the fight okay yeah People are doubting him, yeah. of course. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll I give it to him. I bring it up. I love that he doesn't really do any of that inside the ring. There's no wasted motion with him at all. And that's uh, uh, his fight IQ is, is as far as his striking game. Man, his absurd. kicking game yeah. is fucking kicking. And he's only he ridiculous. Get better. Oh my God, man. Like, I was careful of Lake He didn't care. He was throwing them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Oh, what are you doing?" Bro? You say after the fight that his legs <laughs> did hurt, but everybody's legs yes. hurt after throwing legs. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I think he had one little like extra wrap, so I was worried. Mm -hmm. I, I think one yeah. of us. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Right. Uh, you had Luke by decision. I didn't expect a submission from Luke because you know, like how Richard said. I mean, majority of his fights has been always by knockout. So I'm like, all right. I went by knockout. Let's see, or but but I went by decision to be safe. Mm -hmm. We said it last week, you know, I don't think Willie's gonna like give up, you know, too easy like this. But <laughs> he used all whatever tank was left in the <laughs> tank, and then that was it. He was rocked. He, actually, as a matter of fact, even Luke was rocked for a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was scared a little bit too that's because that's what I loved about it was Woodley was trying to finish, and then he just got tagged, and then yeah. is what it is, man. When you're on. Queer Street like that, you don't know up from down or left hook from right punch. Yeah, but I've got to give it to Luca too for still holding his ground up, even though he, he felt that. He felt that shot, and it just – I, I got to give it to him. Yeah, that, that, that boy got a job, man. I thought Willie would have had a job, but no, it looks like he doesn't anymore. So get your packs on going, man, and go to Bellator, man. <laughs> oh, that's, that's it. You want everyone to go to Bellator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, if he doesn't fight anywhere, I'd say give him an office job. Not an office job, but put him in a position to work for the company, maybe. Um, Commentator you know, Bellator like, or PFL. You know. Like talent, talent relations, you know, something like that. Forrest no, Griffin position. Yeah. Yeah. But they, uh, when um, – I don't even know the name of the company that owns UFC anymore. It's not Zufa. What's that big ass? Mm -hmm. BMI? BMI? What, BME? Mm -hmm, yeah. BME. 
when BMA came in, they fired all those fuckers. Like, I mean, they fired Forrest, they fired Chuck. They all had like cushy gestures. Well, Forrest is still there, no? Forrest is still there, I think. Oh, he, that's runs right. the he, runs the, he runs the Apex. He runs the entire yeah. Apex. I'm stupid. Yeah. But they did fire Chuck, who didn't really have Chuck. a job. He just, and he just wanted to keep playing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the Hughes thing, man, I'll get into that on another podcast. That thing is <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Ivan, how about that, motherfucker? You got Nganu by TKL round two. You almost had it right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You got that perfect. He texted me, right? I, you know? I, I, I told you. you right. I told you. I told you second round, bro, because the first round, he needed to feel him. He needed to see, well, you know, feel each other out in that first round most definitely. And I didn't expect uh, – I mean, I, I expected him to, to to knock him out, but not like the way how he did. Jesus, man. That – oh, my God. Just uh, – I, I mean, like, I, have, I have a lot of respect for Miochik. He went down as a – you know, as a great world heavyweight champion, yeah. not anymore. So, I mean, now it's up to Nangano now to go ahead and, you yeah. know, have that legacy in the heavyweight division as well. He needs to pretty much go refight everyone again in that, in that class, in that rankings. Um, Jones, of course, we all want to see Jones and, and Nangano. Why not? If our Jones, he should be scared because, I don't know, Nangano, he could probably knock him out. I mean, he could. I think I have. I have a great feeling that Longano will knock Jones out for sure. Uh, but I'm, I'm not counting out Jones. I'm all gonna forget he's just a wrestler as well. So that's something that I, I, I don't know. It's it's tough because it's kind of like how when we saw Izzy moving, you know, moving up, went with John. Look what happened. People expected Izzy did not happen. Yeah, but John is doing smart by taking his time. I feel like. Oh, no, I'm with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Absolutely. No, I, I, I'm, I agree with that. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, I don't think Jones is ever going to make two. What well, did Ingano weigh in at? Like two sixty three. Two sixty three. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be fair, Ingano said he wanted to lose another twenty more pounds, which is awesome. I love that. that and Lewis as not, well. It's not the weight that matters; it's the accuracy with the power that he ha- has already. I think yeah. getting down that way is going to help with his defense. Um, where Jones is smart enough to, the game plan would be to wear him out, make him tired, and he can absolutely, he has a skill set to do that. It's just the one shot. You have to worry about a long game plan paying off or that one mega power shot from Nganu, which is more likely to happen as far as, like, it's easier to land one punch than to out-wrestle someone for five rounds. Yeah. I mean, and then I, I, I just feel bad for Lewis as well. I think he should be the next contender. But, you know, we all know that that Jones fight is, of course, the, the money-making right there. So, I mean, Bauer Lewis fight someone else and then wait until the winner of that fight. And he wants to, and he wants to stay busy, too. Yeah. He doesn't want to wait. Fight yeah. someone else. And the winner, I think he said yeah. he wanted to fight, like, July, August at the latest. Like, he wants to fight, like, three times a year. Yeah. Four times a year in the post. And I got to give him credit, too, for Lewis. He's losing the weight as well. He's cutting that weight, and he's looking stronger than ever, than ever before. Like previously, like he's looking at him, he's getting that momentum back, like getting that f- fast rhythm that he used to have. But you know, I, I I'm hoping for the best for Lewis, and hopefully he gets his title shot. And then Ganu, hopefully for the West for the best too to continue, you know, being the champ. And he's just, I just hope that he does beat Jones to shut up Dana White. <laughs> That's how I want it. <laughs> Just shut him up. You thought Izzy was going to win? No. John shut you up. And now this one, you think Jones is going to beat Nangano? No. Nangano is going to destroy Jones. So I, I, feel, I hope he does. I hope he really does do it. So, I mean, you never know. All right. All right, boys. The moment we've all been waiting for. Got to special stuff going on right now. Let's do this. Nice. <laughs> Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, oh god. Oh, oh my god. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> That's right, baby. Oh, and new <laughs> Tapology World <laughs> Champion. The devious one. Me, baby. You me. did it. To my final, <laughs> the my. last person that I ever thought would win. Greatest day of my final, life. Ivan, Score Ivan, Ivan. Of you 400 out. points. 400 oh. points. You barely beat me by like 20. By 20. It was that. It was that. In, in Ganu, perfect in round two. I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah, because uh, I think he has three perfect and I have two. I'm crying right now. I want to thank oh. my coaches. He's dead. 
the Cuban Point Grill. Grill. <laughs> or think Richard, what they coach better. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You've been the point out for the past three events. To have a come from behind victory like that in a division so stacked. Richard Mares, Alex Mares, Jose, the coach, a legitimate black belt whose ground game you always have to be wary of. To come from behind and take that title from the <laughs> way defending topology. How does that feel? Where do you see yourself in the future? Who is next for the devious one, Ivan C? I don't know, man. Whoever wants to step up next. I mean, he you wants better hold match. that belt. You better be. You better enjoy it because I'm taking it next time. All right, <laughs> I'm coming back for it. I'm yeah, don't be back. the Forrest Griffin of this division. Keep that belt. Oh, I'm gonna keep this belt, bro. But you know what? I don't. I don't mind if Richard I'm will take go over because it's. I. I don't mind whoever keeps whoever wins this belt as long as it ain't Alex. That's all. We do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm coming back to the podcast all day. By night. Stronger. That's right. That's I'm right. Gonna go back, I'm going to go back to the drawing board, and I'm going I'm to uh, go over what I did wrong, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to be two-time champ. Uh, get he was team. nervous. <laughs> he, he, was, he was shaking in his Fedor boxers yesterday, thinking he was going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, now I you got to beat my record, Ivan. Right? Now you just got to beat the record. Oh, I know. Yeah. Right? I got to have I, three. I got this Kipe right here, and you just engaganoed him. I just got on you, bro. <laughs> wow. Hell yeah, the chat, baby. The chat. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Because I promise let me you, man, enjoy it, you're going to lose it the next time. No. You're going wow. to lose the next time. I'm the coming back to you. You're not, you're not taking this boat away from me. I'm coming you're back. Not. Man. <laughs> I'm see, coming back. The tear by eyes. Greatest <laughs> my <laughs> life. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now I got to do a promo now. No, yeah, not. you gotta make a promo video. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, make gotta a do promo, it. Ivan. Okay, I'm I'll, 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 I'll do it tomorrow for sure. <laughs> I'll make a promo out of it tomorrow. <laughs> so Jose no. knows because I don't think he knows, right? No, you'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah, people are gonna be happy. People are gonna be very, very happy. But yes, definitely. I'll send you a graphic and post on the Instagram and the uh, everywhere. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what's crazy, Ivan? You know what's crazy? Like, I was telling Rich, I'm like, I've been about worried about. I'm more worried about was. Jose and Chris because they yeah, always score kind of high. So I always do very well when it before these. Uh, you can look it up. Um, yeah, you always been like yeah. second. He was worried about yeah, you. I have like a fifty-one percent win ratio. Um, on Tapology, you can look at your career preferences. Uh, I have fifty-four percent accurate. I don't know what's been happening. It's been dropping lately. It, I think you guys are just that good. Damn, I've made 900 picks so far. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, there you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it, our new World Tapology World Champion. It's not going to last. It's, it's going to last. Enjoy it. Well, yeah, I'm going to enjoy it for the rest of the, you know, for the, rest of the month <laughs> until UFC 261, which will be on April 24th, ladies and gentlemen, which during that week of April, we'll be doing our predictions for UFC 261. Three title fights of that, so we're looking forward to seeing that's a, that card is stacked most definitely. Who said that? Who said that? Uh, Usman Masvidal Usman. two. Ugh. Once you have Zhang versus Rose, mm, Valentina, good one. Yeah, Valentina, Jessica Andrade, Weidman, Uriah Hall. Okay, Uriah mm. Hall. Okay, Anthony Smith, Jimmy Crew, Alex Ooh, Ola, Alex Rivera versus Randy Brown, Carl Robertson versus Brandon Allen, uh, Dana. Uh, Batgirl versus Kevin Natibar, Natibda. And shit, I, don't, that's, I can't even pronounce that's his name. Huh? Yeah, Cle clearly. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is this card's gonna be stacked. Definitely. Yeah. Oh my, can't wait. I cannot wait to go ahead and see this. Uh, talk about this US 261 and stand be still the reigning. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> You got, lucky, I mean, you got lucky. Lucky? You got lucky. Like, even you were surprised. Uh, you got lucky five times in a row with the perfect in the main event. Wow. <laughs> because how does he go from the last card? He was in last place. And then he goes and wins. You got lucky. Stepping through. Huh? Stepping through, man. So how do you go from that to, you know, the goat? And I didn't change my picks oh. either. 
I stick with my picks. I stick with my picks. my picks too, man. I didn't change. And, and, I, and I love that like, couple weeks ago he called you out, Abe, and he's like, when are you going to make a card, huh? And you did. Yeah, I did, and I did. It bit you in that ass, Alex. We'll see. Uh, I'm coming back. I'm going to make history again. I'm going to be two-time, which no one has ever done yet. So we'll have to wait two and time. See. We'll have to wait and see. Well, yes, thank you very much once again, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in for our recap here on MMF Episode Circle Debate. The host of TV's one I will see here with the one and only El Director, Chris Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, and of course, the Modest of Pain, the Modest of Pain from Championship on the Line Podcast. We have Richard and former Typology World Champion, <laughs> former Typology World Champion, Alex Modest. Saying to you guys, goodbye, <laughs> good night. Ah. Sweet of victory. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>